Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from SimpleProgrammer.com. So I'm, I'm here in Florida taking a trip, and I thought I'd give you, tell you a little story, the example of a squeeze situation I talked about. I did a video a while back on, on in a squeeze, being in a squeeze and avoiding squeeze situations, because I just got in one. It's always fun. And maybe, maybe a little lesson to be learned here on, on avoiding a squeeze, and then how you can, you know, what the kind of due diligence you should do on any kind of good deal that you find, any kind of free lunch that you see out there. So I needed to rent a car here in Florida for about a week, eight days. And so I, I looked online, I went to like Enterprise rent a car, and I saw I could rent a car for 400 bucks for like a, something like that, like a, a week and a, a day or something. And that was kind of expensive. I said, wow, yeah, I don't really want to spend 400 bucks. Uh, that, that seems a little bit much, right? So then I said, okay, well, let me let me do some searching. And so I went on to kayak.com and I searched and I found a, a car for eight days for a hundred bucks. I said, wow, this is pretty pretty damn awesome. Of course I'll do that. I'll, I'll reserve that, that sucker right away. And so this was with uh, Economy Rent a Car here in or Orlando, Florida. And so I made the reservation, okay? And so I, you know, take my flight, get there, I'm, it, it's kind of late, you know, it's a long flight. I'm ready to get to my hotel. I'm tired, my head hurts. You know, I'm, I take a shuttle over to this Enterprise Rent-A-Car, or, or not Enterprise, this is Economy Rent-A-Car, okay, in Orlando. And as I'm, I'm taking the shuttle over, uh, you know, it takes a long time to get there. And I'm standing in line for a while, finally I get up to the counter. I noticed a couple of people were arguing at the counter I didn't think that huge of a deal. I was just hoping that then I could try to pull some bait and switch on me or something with the car and say they don't have it. Anyway, I get up there and the guy's like, oh, okay. Uh, so we go through the regular thing and he's like, which would you like? Would you like our standard insurance or our super insurance? <laughs> it's like $20 a day or $40 a day. I'm like, uh, none. I don't, I don't do insurance. I, I know this, right? I've rented 100 cars in my life, more than that. So then the guy's like, oh, well, you got, you got to have insurance. And he said, and I said, well, I can, I have self-insure. Oh, you want to self-insure? Okay, I need to see the declaration page of your insurance. No one's ever asked for that in rental car company, right? Normally use your credit card and that covers it. So I pull out my Geico thing and my Geico insurance only has liability. It doesn't have comprehensive and collision because I got a 2005 Toyota Corolla. I don't give a shit if someone, if I crash that car, right? It's only worth like four or $5,000. I'm gonna, you know, insurance is a bad bet, by the way. In fact, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a video on this. There we go. I was just thinking of a topic, but I won't get into that now. Anyway, what ends up happening is he, we argue back and forth. I said, well, I'll just use my credit card. My credit card has comprehensive, you know, rental car policy on there, like most credit cards do. He says, oh no, no, that's not good. It needs to be full coverage. We need liability and comprehensive together. I show my umbrella policy. <laughs> they, they just like I argue with them for and basically finally I was like look you know what uh, you know he calls the manager over I, I see that they're scamming me this is a scam right but it's late right it's like it's late I just had a flight uh, I, I just took a shuttle over here so I'd have to take a shuttle back uh, so finally I was like you know what fuck it dude just all right fine 20 bucks a day. So the car rental is like 10 bucks a day and the insurance is 20 bucks a day. So I end up paying instead of a hundred dollars, 300 and something dollars, right? And they give me a quarter tank of gas as well. So that was a squeeze situation, right? So that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about a squeeze. I got stuck in the squeeze because I needed to get that car. I didn't want to spend two or three more hours going to another rental car company and booking another car and taking a shuttle back to the airport and a shuttle back to their rental car place or, or whatever. And so I basically let them, you know, take me for an extra 200 bucks. You know, some, some of you might say, well, you should have just said, fuck that, <laughs> and left. But hey, I was in a squeeze. I needed to get to the hotel. I needed to get some rest. It wasn't, it wasn't worth the fight at this point for $200. So there's a good lesson there, right? It, there's a couple lessons there. So th that's just a good example of a squeeze. You can get into a squeeze situation whenever something like that happens and you want to avoid those as much as possible, right? That's, that's in, in your life because the more that you get into a squeeze situations like that, the worse things are. It's a, it's a position where you're in, in a weaker negotiation position and you can get taken advantage of and there's not a lot that you can do about it because you're in the horns of a dilemma, right? Again, watch that video on, on the squeeze to, to get more information about that. But 
uh, lesson learned here. What could I have prevented, right? What could I have, I, I, how could I have prevented this? This is the big, the big thing with this, is, is the lesson that's learned. And in my case, you know, the big lesson here was that after I rented this car, <laughs> I've got the car now, I, I went up and I looked up reviews. I said, are, are they scamming other people? It didn't take me very long to Google uh, economy rent a car and to find, uh, especially economy rent a car Orlando, uh, that there is a news station that investigated them for this crap, that there were tons of people leaving one star reviews saying that this crap, that they were basically forcing the insurance and pulling this scam and, and putting people in a squeeze situation. All similar stories to mine. All I had to do was when I realized that this seemed like to be too good of a deal to be true, right? Like why is this that this rental car company, that their rates are, th are 33 percent of what the other rates are? Why is it that this car company is going to charge me a hundred dollars when everyone else was charging me four hundred dollars? If I would have thought about that, then I could have done a little bit of research and try to find out the answer to that question. Now the answer to that question could be because they're out in the boonies. It could be because they have bad customer service. It could be something that's acceptable to me. And in this case, if I would have looked it up, I would have seen that I need to make sure that I prove to them I have comprehensive and liability insurance, and I could have gotten the deal, right? I could have avoided their scam. I could have been in there and prepared and known what to do, right? Other car companies aren't gonna pull that crap on you. That's why they'll charge a higher price, is they're gonna try and make you happy. Whereas this company's like, fuck you, I don't care about making you happy. I care about, I would take your money, put you in a squeeze situation, you're here on vacation or whatever. Uh, you, you don't got time to deal with this. I'm gonna take advantage of you and, and, and bill you for that, that shitty insurance. That's not even real insurance. So that's, that's their plan. That's their motive, modus operandi, in my opinion. So that's, that, there's a good example for you. So anyway, I made a mistake. I should have checked them out. But you, you know, this is one of those things. Like if you're not awake, if you're not being cognizant, if you're not being aware of what's going on, you're gonna get into these squeeze situations and it's gonna hurt you. Now, this one didn't hurt me too bad. It was only a couple hundred bucks, but it could have been worse, right? I mean, what if this was an airline or what if this was like some, something really expensive that when I get there, when you get to the counter, you get, you get, uh, and I didn't have an alternative, right? Maybe I should have made two rental car reservations, right? Some rental cars, they, they let you make a reservation without a credit card. So I could have had a backup plan, right? Or maybe I should have had a backup plan just in case, right? So, you know, there, there's a balance. Obviously you can't like overthink everything and be overprepared for everything. But in that case, hey, I, I, I screwed up. I'll, I'll free, freely admit it. And I got to pay the price. I got to pay an extra 200 bucks. And see, let's see what happens when I try to take the car back. I took some good pictures of it, but I bet they're gonna try and pull some other kind of crap, some other kind of scam on me when, when I go back because that, that's who I'm dealing with, right? That's 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 who, yeah, you know so there you go all right if you like this video if you want to get more videos like this one so you can avoid scams and squeezes click that subscribe button below i'll talk to you next time take care